Hello and welcome to the 54th video in this series, Programming a Chess Engine and GUI in JavaScript. So last video then we had some color squares finally appear on the, the, the board in our GUI. In this video we're actually going to get as far as putting the pieces on the board. Now the piece images themselves will be available for, for download and I'm just flicking up the board here. I got the images here, these PNGs, off Wikipedia and I can't for the life of me remember exactly who they're from by name but I'm going to have a look for them and I'll credit the person in one or two videos time when I found the name because I've started this video uh, without actually remembering to look that up but these will be packaged in, they're free to use, they were from Wikipedia and they'll come in the download with the rest of the code as normal. So with the slight apology there out of the way for that, we'll get on with actually how we're going to program the code. The first thing we need to do is go into goodoldstyles.css and we're going to add in a class called piece and you'll see I've already added it in because I was preparing for the video and forgot to take it out so it's in there inside the CSS called dot piece with position being set as absolute. And the way we're going to do this um, is quite simple really. We're just going to loop through the board and we know what the file and the rank is of the board so we know where our piece is going to be positioned. All of the pieces are conveniently 60 by 60 so they fit very nicely on the squares which is why the squares were made to be 60 wide by 60 tall. So I can do very much a similar thing that, um, or we can do sorry, a very similar thing to what was done in main with initializing the board squares and that's simply to do a loop this time they're looping through the board setting our rank name and our file name and then we'll use the you'll have noticed probably that the file names for the pieces are exactly the same as the file name types that we have inside the engine itself in terms of we have a small b for black and a small w for white and then a big b, big k, big n etc for the piece type so we can use our sidecar and our piece car arrays from the engine actually then to access the correct png. So stop driveling on, I'm going to put this function here inside the gui.js and we'll call the function set initial board pieces. Now this won't take into account for now, this will it'll come much later, probably last, is whether the board is in a flipped state or not. And it's an appropriate name saying it's in a flipped state because it took me a while to actually get my head around flipping the board and mirroring it in because it's a slightly different mirroring to when we mirror the board to switch the position because you um the kings obviously go onto effectively an opposite side anyway, it doesn't matter for now, but flipping the board is a horrible thing and was very, very annoying, but won't be yet inside here. So what we need are some variables. We need a square. We need a square 120. So you can probably already see where this is going. We need a file and a rank. And we'll have our rank name and we'll have our file name. And we'll have our image string. Now, you probably, if you followed the series so far, realize that I'm a big fan of declaring all variables to start with and then doing things with them. And I declare far too many, really, here. There are, this, the function I'm writing now could be done in a much more efficient way, but for clarity, you know, it's hardly a performance issue when you set the board up like this. Um, I prefer to do it in this way. And then we have in the end the piece file name and finally a piece. So what we need to do is we need to loop through all of the squares on the board and see if there's a piece. So we say that square equals naught and we're just going to loop up to 64. So one minute I'm saying efficiency is important, the next minute uh, saying it's not important, the next minute I'm saying we need to be efficient and just do 64 squares. And now we'll take our square 120 from our square as should be very familiar from the code in building the engine. We can then get our piece going for our game board dot pieces on our square 120, like so. And now we can also get our file by using our files board for our square 120, and also 
we can set our rank from our ranks board. Square 120. Good. Okay. So if our piece is greater than or equal to a white pawn and our piece is less than or equal to a black king, then we know it's relevant. And I've realized there, because I'm in the old C habit, that I haven't put in a pieces and a dot here and here. Just scroll this all down a little bit now to make sure we've got enough room. And so if we've got our pieces, we can set up now then our rank name in a similar way to well, exactly the same way as we did in the, the other function. So it's going to be rank plus and then the rank plus one. And then the file name will be the file plus the file plus one. And now we need to set up the file name for the piece. So the piece file name, first of all, remember we need to put the directory on. So we'll have our images and then a forward slash because it's in the images directory. And then we'll take our sidecar. And of course we need here the color of the piece. So we'll take the piece color array remember using these way back with the the engine hopefully so that'll get us our w or our b and then we need the piece car as well it was piece car in this way i think of our piece and what we here need to do we can leverage the function to uppercase here to actually get the uppercase version because remember they're all in lowercase versions in the piece car array so we'll make that to uppercase and the last thing we need to do is append.png on the end of there to get our image. So the image string then is going to be the, the image that we're actually going to add inside our board div. So it'll have an image tag in this way and should also have some speech marks. And then we set the source equal to, and we escape string this here, and it'll be the piece file name like this and like so we also escape string this one here and now we'll set the class and a class of course is equal to and I hope you're not getting confused with the uh, escaping of the the quotes here I should maybe have done single quotes make this all a little bit easier but never mind and plus the rank name and then a gap and we've got our class with the file name and then we add last but not least just as before on the end close off the quotations and then close off the markup tag for the image as well so now we've got our full string written in for our image we simply need then to append this as we did with the squares to our board so we take our board div and simply append our image string like so. Okay, so that's that function written, but actually things aren't complete here because we need some way of clearing off all of the pieces first when we set up a new position. We can't simply just keep adding pieces on and pieces on and pieces on. So we're going to make a new function called clear all pieces, and I'm just going to put that just above this set initial pieces. So I make a function called clear all pieces and this does what it says on the tin. It'll simply clear everything up. So all we'll do is we'll take using a jQuery selector by class this time to so take all of the items or domain objects with the piece class on them. That's just why I use the dot, oper dot operator and a great function in jQuery the remove and that's all we need there to do to remove all of the pieces and we're going to call this clear all pieces actually before we do anything else inside this set initial board pieces so we've got one more little function to write now and we're going to call this function new game and it's going to take as an argument an fen string and then inside we're simply going to set up now a new game so the first thing we need to do is pass an fen to the board obviously and this is the internal engine we're passing the fen to 
I'm going to just put for the console for debugging later on a print board in here so we actually print and what we can do now is take our set initial board places in this way and set up the piece images. So what further remains to do now is inside the set FEN here now we can call our we'll take out search position for a start and now we'll just call our new game function in this way here and we'll take our new game function and also inside main.js where we've got the document ready function here instead of passing the FEN and printing the board we'll now just make a new game so we actually set up the pieces in this way. So a lot of, well not a lot, a bit of code gone in there. I hope I haven't made too many whacking great typos. So if I just bring across the browser now and give this a refresh, let's see what happens or whether it complains at me. And it doesn't complain and you can see now that all the pieces have appeared in the right sequence on the board. And if I just quickly go um, into some code. I'm just going to put a couple of FENs in and this is stuff I haven't tested before the video so I hope it works okay. If I just go here and set the position yes you can see that it's actually setting the FEN up correctly as well. I'm just having a very very quick check that everything looks alright and everything does indeed look okay. I'll just take one more. Uh, let's take this one here and see how things look and set position. Yep. Everything looks to be pretty much OK and in order. OK then that's it then for this video and in the next video we can actually start looking about how we're going to uh, be able to select squares, highlight the squares and maybe start looking at how we'll play versus the engine now that we've got the GUI more or less set up. So thanks very much for watching, comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.